Ladies and gentlemen, the morning show right here. Joining us now uh, is Oji Okbe with stories trending around the world. Pure and simple. Very well said. <laughs> Fine, well done. Hiya, you look glamorous today. Thank Good you morning. very much. How are you? Good morning, Good Mr. Morning. K. Good morning. All right, yeah. let's yeah. dive right into you love it. it. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. I'll give it to you now. <laughs> don't want Kaya Day. I don't want okay, I'll, 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 I'll drop it. I'll drop it. What do you want? What do you get? Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Palestine, Hamas militants on Monday released two elderly Israeli women held hostage in Gaza as the United States expressed increasing concern that the escalating Israel-Hamas war will spark a wider conflict in the region, including attacks on American troops. The death toll in Gaza continues to rise as Israel ramped up airstrikes that flattened buildings in what it said was preparation for an eventual ground assault. In the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, while addressing Parliament on Monday after his two-day visit to Israel, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, said the deadly hospital blast at Gaza's Al-Ahili Hospital was likely caused by a missile or part of one that was launched from within Gaza towards Israel. On the basis of the deep knowledge and analysis of our intelligence and weapons experts, the British government judges that the explosion was likely caused by a missile or part of one that was launched from within Gaza towards Israel. In the United States, former President Donald Trump compared himself to former South African president and anti-apartheid activist, the late Nelson Mandela on Monday, casting himself as the victim of federal and state prosecutors he alleges are targeting him and his businesses for political reasons. The former president also joked while speaking to a group of reporters on the difficulty Republican candidates are faced with to win the speaker's gavel, stating that only Jesus Christ could secure enough support from House Republicans to win the speakership. I said there's only one person that can do it all the way. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. <laughs> if Jesus came down and said, I want to be speaker, he would do it. Other than that, I haven't seen I haven't seen anybody that can guarantee it. In Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Monday lauded Nigeria's success in the $11 billion Process and Industrial Developments Limited Arbitration Award. The president said the verdict has liberated the country from unjust economic malpractice and has proven that nation states will no longer be held hostage by economic conspiracies between private firms and solitary corrupt officials who conspire to extort and indebt the very nations they swear to defend and protect. Another banga, baby, calm down, calm down. On our entertainment, Afrobeat star Divine Kubo, who goes by the stage name Rema, in a trending video on Monday expressed his excitement after meeting Rwandan president Paul Kagame, saying that he is the first president he has ever met in his life. The award-winning artist was in the East African country for the Trace Awards ceremony that took place in Kigali on Saturday, October 21st, where he won the Song of the Year category for his global hit song, Calm Down. In the video, Rema also told the president that he felt so comfortable visiting Rwanda and praised him for being a father who cares for the youth. I must say big shout out to the fans. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Another! Oh, Rema is doing, so, doing us proud. But I mean, I want to uh, charge the president to organize some sort of a retreat for our entertainers who have been making us proud. It's a shame Rema hasn't met. He didn't even meet Buhari. Isn't, isn't yeah, that strange? Yeah, exactly. That's the first president he's, he's ever met. Him. And that's 
the president from Rwanda. another country. Yes, Rwanda. that's Rwanda's president. Yes. And he's been, I mean, he's been hitting the right notes in terms of um, publicity for the uh, for Paul Kagame. It would be very nice, like you mentioned. We yeah. now have, I mean, kudos to this administration, Ministry of Arts, um, Culture, and Creative yes. um, Economy. So Economy. there's an opportunity to have a round table with these men and women who are putting Nigeria on the global map and doing us proud. Yes. So this is a call from... <laughs> What's trending? From what's trending president. and all of us. <laughs> well done, Rama. Well, all right. Let's begin what's trending. On Monday, the Federal Executive Council approved the establishment of a humanitarian and poverty elevation trust fund as part of efforts to cushion the effects of economic hardship on vulnerable Nigerians. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu, who briefed State House correspondents at the end of the meeting, said the fund is expected to garner up to $5 billion annually. Every year, we hope to be able to um, raise at least $5 billion within this um, fund. And this is from the different sectors. So we're going to have contribution from government, of course, from the private sector, development partners, um, individuals, philanthropic individuals, and other innovative form of um, crowdfunding. Well, while some have lauded this uh, initiative as great, others have even said, "What? what uh, is there a legislation uh, backing this actual trust fund as well? I mean, like she mentioned, I mean, she opened during the ANGA saying that, you know, 30% was going to come from the federal government as well as, and then 70% from the private sector. I think it's a great initiative because it will help the private sector to, you know, organize funds for the most vulnerable. Let me take a, a reaction uh, from Albright, who wrote, while establishing a humanitarian trust fund is a positive step, there is a valid concern that bureaucratic processes might hinder the efficient distribution of funds, potentially leaving those still in need or waiting for assistance. I mean, I think that's a, a great uh, a tweet there because, I mean, he also raised a very valid point because of the bureaucratic processes that we have experienced in Nigeria. Yeah. Ayo, you know that last week, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, launched the uh, Renewed Hope uh, Conditional Cash Transfer Program to 15 million households at the State House in Abuja, where dummy checks were handed out to beneficiaries for photo ops. It elicited a wave of reactions. Uh, the launch of that event coincided with the uh, World Poverty Eradication uh, Day. Let's take some uh, reactions from that event before I come to you, Ayo. Uh, this person wrote, what governance has been reduced to in Nigeria? Three ministers and SGF presents 25,000 naira, that is $24 or so, to a vulnerable woman all of them are smiling except the beneficiary. Then another person there goes, uh, this is a show of shame. 15,000 naira given to a man to fight poverty with SGF and two ministers posing for photo to show the whole world. By the time the old man uses 7,000 naira for transport fare back to Makodi and returns 7,000 naira he borrowed to go to Abuja, what? He is left with is 1,000 naira to fight poverty, senseless. So you see, I love that detail there because, you know, when, when it is great to make these types of, you know, pledge to the poor, have we really calculated their need? Yeah, Ayo, absolutely. Quickly. You know, uh, at least we've come from 6,000 naira, which was the initial provision yeah. and proposal for the conditional cash transfer to 25,000 naira. So that's a leap. But I'd mentioned, you know, what, one of the... Here, when we talked about, when we had talked about conditional cash transfers, that mm. before you decide on how to respond to a need, especially when it comes to development work, is usually a needs assessment done in that area as to is this the most is this the best way to respond to the needs of the people? I want to assume and hope that the federal government did this needs assessment to um, evaluate the extent of the needs of the people before coming or arriving at the figure of 25,000 naira to give to 15 million households in the next uh, three months, so from now to December. A lot of questions have been asked even when this announcement was made. So I won't go over that, obviously around what happens after December. What's now in view is this announcement, or perhaps a re-announcement following her previous announcement at Unger, mm -hmm. that they were going to launch this um, poverty and human humanitarian uh, um, trust fund. You make a very great point with regards to what, what is the legislature back in this. Yeah. She says the president has approved. Don't forget with the Education Trust Fund for the payment of loans, that had to go through the Higher Education Act. 
So is there going to be maybe you know in this uh, in this government what they you know what has happened in some cases is putting the cart before the horse. Absolutely, they'll make announcements, and after the big announcement, then they, don't, they start to tidy up the house and see how this will work in principle. Something else she said, which I think is quite important, is that they will create structure, which will include the Minister of Finance to ensure that this fund is judiciously managed. That's another area of concern for Nigerians in terms of the transparency of the process. Um, hopefully, the, the, the dispersal of the money of the 25,000 hours has begun beyond the photo opportunity with the dummy check. Who are these beneficiaries? Absolutely. What is their um, status? They talked about having NIN and bank, bank um, accounts. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. We must have that so we can trace. We don't want stories that touch. There's still the question around the social register. What's happening that was with my that? Point, yeah. Have they been able to clean that up? Yeah. Where, where, where is the social register? Are these, are they, I mean, of course, we have to protect the dignity of the beneficiaries, but in the interest of accountability and because of what has happened in the past, for the sake of transparency, let us no, not do the same thing that we did in the last administration. Mm -hmm. Let's ensure that people people who truly need this help and support get it. I like that. Well, you know, in the same vein, human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, over the weekend called for a review of a plan for the payment of 500 million naira in fines imposed on 4,000 prisoners in order to decongest the Nigerian prison system. Falana made the call on live television stating that while the interior minister Olubumi Tunjiojo, who announced the plan last week, deserves commendation for the initiative. The federal government should spend that money on rehabilitation of prisons and work with the attorney general and state governors to pardon the prisoners. I mean, it just feels like a no-brainer. Um, Rufai, over to you on both stories. So the sad reality is that I want Nigeria to do well and I want this government to do well because that's the government we've got in power now. But it's fast becoming a government of headlines. They couch big headlines, but there's no, there's no result. I think probably the only person that has improved or impressed me is the Olubo Miojo that he said something and he met the timeline, the Minister of Interior. Apart from him, just big headlines. And I subscribe to the advice of Mr. Femi Falano. Absolutely. Why don't you just use that money to do a proper reform in the prison? Let's even have CCTV cameras. I mean, when you saw the jailbreak, you saw the shambolic state of our prisons. Fix that. Improve on the welfare of the warders and, the, and those that keep the prisoners in there. Also, going back to the FG poverty alleviation thing, you see, this conditional cash transfer thing and other schemes, social intervention programs, we need to see practicality. We need to see empirical evidence. It's beginning to look like a ruse. That was how, so today now, are you telling me Aya, that we've, have, have we abandoned the school feeding program? Because we don't hear about that any longer. Maybe it's have, part of the have whole- Have we abandoned um, trader money? Maybe it's part of the whole uh, cash, but cash the truth is, what is the impact? At least we should see visible impact. And that's why I keep saying, I know where we copy these models from, Brazil and the likes, they tie to visible impact. But with us, we are not seeing visible impact. So it's not best that we rather use that money to be able to develop the economic mm -hmm. prospects. Look at what we are saying with uh, the, another big headline. Because it's fast becoming a government of headline. Look at this day. In the move house, the FX backlog okay. says one trillion economy visible by 2022. I've done the analysis here. It's not possible. Yeah. In three years, even if the economy grows 20%, which we know is not possible. So it's just, I think what they should do is, and I'm not alone saying this. I think uh, the Financial Times said it. He should focus on things like catch. Even if it's two things that he can achieve effectively, why doesn't he focus on revamping the schools in the first place rather than going to set up a new bureaucracy with this uh, yeah. student loan thing? They'll set up a bank in it. They set up a bank. They will have to run a bureaucracy. There will be corruption. There will be civil servants and all of that and all of that in yeah. the system. So why doesn't he just, even if it's two to three things, you get working. Let's focus on that first rather than this because all we just keep hearing is screaming headlines. Yeah. Well, I wanted to focus more also on that Falana story because I think he made a very valid point there because, I mean, some of those inmates, that's what they are, prisoners, are not convicts, you know? And yeah, I think that, and some of them are just, they are the ones waiting trial. Yeah, and why don't you just set up system. a system to pardon them instead of spending that money on their fines? But, so this on is, their fines, So this is part refine. of the things you are saying, Oji. So, Look at the system. The, 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 the Supreme Court is stretched, as we speak. Mm -hmm. We need a couple of more judges. Even across board, you need more judges because work is so much. 
So why don't we rather even spend the money on accelerating the judicial system? That too. Giving that money yes. to some of, you know, the courts, getting more judges on the bench, trading more, you know, get... But, it's a lot you know, of money. 500, just 500. Headlines, headlines, money. headlines. Yeah. We want to see action, you All know. Right. Action that are independently verifiable. And once we Absolutely. see that, we'll, I mean, we'll give the kudos where necessary. All right. We'll, we'll take another story, um, and you'll take this one, Coyote. Uh, Senator Ben Murray Bruce on Monday responded to critics reacting to a post he made over the weekend asking Nigerians to buy Nigerian products so as to grow the Naira and have a better economy. In the post on X, Bruce shared his thoughts on why the Naira is failing. Let's take that tweet. Well, he wrote, The Naira is finding its proper and natural value because the Central Bank of Nigeria has stopped the practice of defending the Naira with $1.5 billion monthly. If you want the Naira to rise, don't come on social media to vent. Instead, it will be best if you now defended the Naira by coming on social media with glow data coming to Silver Vet Cinemas to watch Nollywood movies, shifting from Manchester United and Real Madrid to Ayimba FC, and Kano Pillars, eating Dangote spaghetti, and washing it down with Chivita juice, and flying home for Christmas and New Year with air peace. Only when we hashtag buy Ninja to grow the Naira will the Naira appreciate, not when you come on social media, to vent. Well, Coyote, you know that this, uh, he will definitely get some backlash on that. I'll take what, uh, one Twitter user responding to Ben Bruce's post, actually on X, accused him of not patronizing Nollywood by not showing Nigerian movies exclusively at the Silverbird Cinemas, which he founded. Well, however, in an apparent response, Ben Bruce pointed out that uh, how he contributes to the quota. Uh, by growing the Naira, including buying uh, several innocent vehicles. I mean, he says he buys innocent vehicles. Yeah. But that uh, Twitter user that, you know, <laughs> that, what, what do you call Shared some I violence. Said, yeah. on, I, yes. I mean, that was some yes. serious yes. violence because it is what it is. It is. You have your yes. silver bed cinemas. I mean, this yes. is no, I love uh, Ben Bruce, by the way. But you have your silver bed cinemas there. Show Nollywood movies exclusively. Grow the Naira that way instead of just, you know, all of yeah, that. But I, was, I think he made a very actually, valid point. I was actually looking forward to somebody <laughs> saying, oh, Oh, yeah, Senator Ben Bruce, your designer suits are so on point, and they're not Nigerian designs. Oh my goodness! So I was expecting to see that, but mm. I know you see there is nothing as good as just speaking to the truth. There is a need to buy Nigeria, to patronize Nigerian goods. We are all wearing suits and dresses. I'm sure most of them are not things made in Nigeria. But as much as possible, let us patronize Nigeria. Yes. Let us do it. And there's nothing so. wrong with uh, Senator Ben Bruce saying these things. It's necessary. It's the Somebody fact. has to say yeah. it is the fact. It doesn't stop us from still buying from others because we can't buy only Nigerian products, but it is good for us to patronize Nigerian products a lot more. So on that one, I think he is right, but he will definitely cause people to be extremely violent against They will bring <laughs> violence against him on social media. And right. that's the place where that one resides. But very quickly, if I may refer to um, what uh, the minister said earlier at the um, FEC meeting, it is necessary for the government to think before they speak. If you're saying that you're going to do crowdfunding, yeah. crowdfunding, when I heard that, I'm like, crowdfunding where? To raise five billion, uh, Ahmad? How are you going to get that money? Crowdfunding is it's possible, it's, okay. It's, 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 <laughs> and it's going to be done by Nigerian government, it's not okay. by some social media guys. It is something that you have to think about. And finally, on uh, I think the other one was uh, the Minister of Interior. He was here on this program yeah. when he was talking about the work he's done. Fantastic gentleman. But it is also very necessary for him to listen. There's nothing wrong with him listening to Falano, uh, Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, and saying that we are going to actually change and put that money in helping those 
who are supposed to be out of there and also develop our, our prison uh, services, yes. develop it to the level where it becomes what it should be, correctional centers, right. yes. not prisons, correctional centers, because anything you hear about Nigeria today, if somebody goes to prison, they're going to learn drugs, they're going to learn how to trade in all those things, all the things that are negative that they learn once a young man goes to prison, they say he never comes out right again. All so right. that's really worrying. All right, Rufai. Okay, so what I want to say is I don't think even Senator Bermore Bruce is couching the response on the conversation properly. The thing about growing in Naira is not just about patronizing, you know, Nigeria made good. It's about for Nigeria to start producing high value goods. Yes, that's good too. So there's a huge difference between just exporting cocoa and turning it around into valued good. There's a All huge right. difference between just having petrochemicals and making television on iPad. Your normal computer will set you back about $1,000. That's a high value good. As a country, if you export hundreds of that, you will get thousands of dollars X. But if you are saying, oh, yeah, just patronize the basic and all of that, yes, you can patronize what Nigerian cinemas and everything, but the conversation should be high-value goods. All right. That's where right. Nigeria... But the, um, and the next question is, how quickly can we get comparative advantage there? All right, then. We'll take another story. A said member of the Dunamis International Gospel Center, Chukwu Adeso Onyema, in a video I'm making rounds on social media, appealed to the senior pastor of the church, Paul Enetje to refund investments that he claims to have made for several years in the kingdom of God. In the video, Nyema stated that he is making the appeal because of the dire economic hardship in Nigeria, as the government and even banks have failed him. Nyema added that he is no longer interested in going to heaven and is ready to go to hell if it means that his money will be refunded. Let's take a look. I was making a research in my library and I discovered that I have an investment in the kingdom of God. Right now, I am no longer interested. I don't want to die in hunger before my time. Please, I am no longer interested of the kingdom of God there. I joined your church in the year 2008. In 2011, I became a full member. I went for, for membership class. I was given a certificate of membership i still furthermore for disciple and leadership i got my certificate at the end i still furthermore for dunam for diploma dunamis school of ministry i got the certificate so i have everything to let you know everything in my house look at it in 2013 manifesting his glory let's forget about the offering and the the, the gifts that i give to churches to not only in your center, in branches. I give to them altar and so many. I don't need that. What I need is what I have a proof of. These are my investments to heaven. I don't want that heaven again. At least I have made up my mind to go to hell. Please, I need my money. I'm no longer interested in heaven. Please, if you can listen to me, I will be my knees are on the ground. I'm serious, I'm not joking. I need that investment now. I need that investment now. I was brainwashed to spend all this money. I was not with my senses. Right now that I'm in my senses, I need this money and I will be grateful. Thank you. Ayo, while people are cracking up and laughing yeah. at this, this is a very, very serious conversation to have. This man does not want to go to heaven but again. Joking. He's ready to go to hell. I mean, he Quickly. said he, that his investments were... There's so yeah. many angles to this story. Number one, I want to acknowledge because he's valid. I cannot understand what his journey has been, yes. his pain, what his Absolutely. experiences are. However, Mr. Man, sorry <laughs> to say that... So, uh, is he going to ask for a refund on education, on the fees he's paid for education? Because there are many fees along the way that he's talked about investment because at least aspirationally, he went to school to have a better chance at life. Is he going to ask for that? I can't imagine going to invest in maybe property and asking them to. It, there's just so many funny things. I can't take the meat of his um, case seriously. Maybe he should sue the church. I don't know what yeah. to say about yeah, that. I know, I, uh, just before we wrap up, I will just very quickly mention, I feel so sorry for this man. I am sad. And I hope that churches will watch this and they will say, come, let us help you. Yeah. That okay. is more important because yes. this is not the funny. The church is not the government. People no, they, need to be no, realistic No, it's his tight well. that he's what talking he about. 
Yes, but the churches need to help him. Well, they all need right. To help well, him. all right. I, I yeah. wish we had more time yeah. for this conversation, guys. I'd like to thank you all, as always, for your contribution on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.